The iterative process that we've just seen converges at the intersection of the load line and the exponential curve. And it leads to accurate results, but it is somewhat cumbersome. On the other extreme, the ideal model, which we've seen, allows for quick qualitative analysis, but misses the reality that a finite, albeit small, voltage is needed before the diode conducts. A very useful model lies somewhere in between those two models. The model, this new model, models the diode as a constant voltage drop in the circuit such that the diode can be replaced with a constant ideal voltage source when analyzing forward bias diodes. So instead of replacing the diode with a short circuit when it's conducting and an open circuit when it's not conducting, it'll still be an open circuit when it's not conducting using the constant voltage drop model, but when it is conducting, the diode will be replaced with a constant voltage source. This voltage, V sub D, the constant voltage, is chosen to be somewhere in the middle range, typically in the middle range, of the conducting portion of the diode. Presumably, it'll be at the bias point. In this case, we've chosen 7 tenths of a volt to be that constant voltage. So we'd model the diode as a constant voltage drop of 7 tenths of a volt. And when the diode is conducting, it will conduct any quantity of current that would be established by the rest of the circuit. So in other words, 7 tenths of a volt drop, but the current that is carried through it is not a function of the diode itself, but is a function of and is controlled by the circuit surrounding the diode. Let's consider these two models in these examples here. So we've got a voltage source, VDD, and a diode with a resistor in series for the diode that then serves to limit the, cold, the current and the, volt, and the voltage of the diode. So in the ideal diode case, V sub D would be zero volts when it's conducting and open circuit when it's not conducting. So in this case, we would calculate the current as, call it I sub D, I sub D would equal V D D minus the voltage drop across there which is zero divided by R. Under the constant voltage drop model, the diode would be modeled with a constant voltage drop of V sub D. And then in this case, the current would be I sub D would equal <coughs> the voltage source here, V D D, minus the voltage drop, the constant voltage drop model of the diode, divided by R. To get a feel for the differences that this will make, let's take a look at an example where V D D, the source voltage, is equal to 5 volts and the resistor is equal to one kilo ohm. In the ideal model, the current then would be I sub D would equal the five volts minus the zero divided by the one kilo ohm, which would give us five milliamps. In the voltage, or the constant voltage drop model, which does take into account some loss of voltage across the diode necessary to open the diode and get it to conduct. In this case then, the voltage across this one, uh, one kilo ohm resistor would be, or equivalently I sub D then is going to be the voltage across the resistor, which would be the VDD, which we're calling 5 volts, minus the constant voltage drop of 0.7 volts divided by the 1 kilo ohm resistor. Well, 5 minus 0.7 is 4.3 divided by 100 would be 4.3 milliamps. So again, 4.3 milliamps isn't exact but it's more realistic of the current that would be flowing in a circuit with a diode because it does take into account that some voltage is lost in opening up or getting the diode to conduct.